Five fans, what's going on? All right, so you probably already heard, but I appreciate you checking out the video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you like the content. So, Yair Rodriguez versus the beat Magomed Sharapov. The fight is canceled, but the good news is Zabit Magomed Sharapov, he hasn't withdrew from the fight card, so we might still get to see one half of what this fight would have been. Um, and it seemed like Zabit found out about this cancellation around the same time we did. You know, I, he's on record on Twitter saying things like, you know, he doesn't know who's to blame. Like, he signed the contract weeks ago, and all of a sudden, here we are, August 5th. The fight was supposed to be August 29th. So we have, what, like three weeks you know, pretty much two weeks for an opponent to actually accept, prepare, and meet him on August 29th if that happens. But it's a tough position for Zabit, man. I feel for him because in this era of 2020 UFC fights, it doesn't really behoove the person who's still trying to compete to take on the, the newcomer, the late stand-in fighter. I mean, we've seen where, at least on two occasions especially, where there is a short notice stand in fighter and they get the upper hand. It happened against Tony Ferguson. It happened against Tyron Woodley. So for Zabit, when you look at who his options are to fight, I mean, let's just throw out the names Brian Ortega. That's the name I believe Zabit will accept. Brian Ortega is the name. He's up there in the rankings. He's ranked number two, right behind Max Holloway. You could put Max Holloway in there, but he just had a fight not too long ago. Uh, he may not be ready to hop right back in there. I mean, he could take a short notice fight. You know, he's got that he's got that style where maybe he just wants to, he has that mentality where maybe he just wants to go ahead and get it over with and get back to Alexander Volkanovsky. That would be hilarious because, you know, he doesn't want that third match, Alex. But if Max Holloway knocks off the number one guy or the number three guy, and he's already the number one guy. I mean, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. It, it, it'd be kind of hard to avoid a third match against Max for Alexander. But back to Zabit. So he can fight Ortega. He can fight Max. Chan Sung Jung's out the country. I don't know what the, what the uh, protocol is to get that man over here. And lastly, he can fight Calvin Cater. The most dangerous fight he could take is Calvin Cater. If Zabit Magomed takes on Calvin Cater, you know, shout out to him because Calvin Cater is a fighter right now who is on a wrecking ball mission. If you fight Calvin Cater, it would be a rematch. And that just doesn't work in the favor of Zabit. Calvin Cater knows his moves. He's been in there with him. He knows how he moves. He knows how he attacks. He knows where he can win. He knows where it's not favor for him. The positioning game, it all works in Calvin Cater's favor. For Zabit, once you beat a fighter one time and you got to go back in there and fight him a second time, the pressure is on you to make sure that you do what you did the first time. And we all remember Calvin Cater, he started to win that third round after Zabit started fading. So the question becomes, if Zabit takes on Calvin Cater, is this fight going to be a five round fight? That works in the favor of Cater, mentally anyway. Zabit might have a surprise for us all on that, but Calvin Cater comes out as the favorite to win a five round fight. If it's a three round fight, that first round between Zabit and Calvin Cater is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing because you gotta win that first round. You gotta win that first round. I mean, you either win the first round and the second or you win the second and the third. Like, what are you gonna do? So that's it, y'all. Tell me who you guys think is going to be fighting Zabit. Hopefully, this, hopefully he stays in the car because, I mean, we just got to have that fight. And, I mean, we got Alex Caceres on the car. Th go ahead, throw Alex up there. Uh, and there's another guy. Who else is up there? I don't know his name. He's um, Jacazy, something like that. He's on the car. Giga Jacazy, yeah. You know, they could step in, but it wouldn't be as... Well, maybe. Maybe it would be. I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of those things, man. Featherweight division, man. Everyone sleeps on the featherweight division like it's not a hot division, but it really is. It really is. It's kind of tough to say. Like, the bantamweights, they got a lot of hype right now. The, uh, who else is it? Uh, the welterweights, yeah. The, the featherweights and the welterweights, man. Y'all sleeping on them. But anyway, I'm not going to get carried on. That's a whole other conversation for a whole different video. Who's the hottest division in the UFC? Who is the sleepiest division in the UFC? 
Anyway, all right, y'all. We got to find out, man. Is this fight going to go on? Zabit, stay with us, man. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if I was Zabit's homeboy. I don't know if I would tell him to take a fight on two weeks' notice. It didn't work out for Tony Ferguson. It didn't work out for Tyron Willie. So, come on. This is tough. This is tough. So, anyway, Natural Grappler, thank you for checking out the channel. See you next time. Later.